Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another episode of the Black Health and Wealth Show. Today, our guest is Mr. Ezell Wooden Jr. of the EF, excuse me, ECF and N Group. I don't want to get that wrong because we want people to find you and be able to uh, talk to you about your business. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a tax professional. We know that this is that time of year um, where you all are filing your taxes, getting your money back, thinking that you hit the lottery. And um, we want to set the record straight on some things and talk to Mr. Wooden about what you're going to need to do uh, before you get your taxes done, things that you need to find out. So before we begin, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Appreciate the invite. And um, so tell us what's your background. Uh, I started doing taxes in 1991. I was in the Navy. And when we deploy, sometimes we deploy it over tax season. So they take a special number of us, send us to tax school so we can do taxes while we're gone. Started that uh, when I retired from the Navy, I had a little situation with my taxes. <laughs> so I had to uh, figure out how to remedy the situation. Went to H&R Block, took the course, reduced the $7,000 tax liability to about $1,200. That's a big jump. Big jump, great. So once then I had the fever, so I just kept going. Um, I worked for H&R Block from about 2003 to 2008. Got my knowledge up and left them in open ECF and in. Okay. So what professional license, I mean, I know you took a course, but is there any other professional licenses or things like that that you need in order to be preparing taxes? Because I know a lot of folks, you know, they've got somebody that's, you know, been doing their taxes for years. They may be unlicensed, not up on tax codes, things like that. But Exactly. Um, the IRS has been trying to regulate tax, tax preparers over the past two years. They actually got sued for trying to regulate tax preparers because just those guys that you mentioned, they've been doing taxes for 20 years, but they have no book knowledge. They're not up on codes, but they don't think they should be regulated. Well, the Justice Department said, you're right, we can't regulate you. The IRS came back and said, well, we can make your educational requirements more stringent. The state of Maryland, starting this year, is going to require you to take a knowledge test to be a tax preparer and be licensed in the state of Maryland. I'm already licensed in the state of Maryland. The IRS also has what's called an annual refresher course, which is 20 hours of training, plus you have to pass a 100-question test. I've also done that. Uh, when you're talking about levels of tax preparer, you have a regular tax preparer, then you have what's called an enrolled agent. Enrolled agent is a tax preparer, but they can also argue your case for you in front of the IRS. Okay. So, go ahead. So that, that's one of the great things, and that's my next step. Okay. So with that being said, you know, you said that they're regulating now. What have, is there any penalty or anything like that for those folks who, you know, like we talked about the, the person that's been doing everybody's taxes in the family, you know, they bought one copy of TurboTax and they want to do everybody's taxes. Right. So is there some penalty for those folks that are doing that? There's not an actual penalty for them. What it is, is now if you took your refresher course, you can actually go on the IRS website. Google my name, well, search my name in there, and it'll come up and it'll give you my PTIN number. You know I am in compliance with the IRS. Okay, so you want to explain to our viewers what PTIN is? Prepare a tax identification number. Okay. If someone is doing your taxes, they should have a prepare a tax identification number. Mm. That means they have met the IRS requirements to do your taxes. Now, you know, Mike may be able to do your taxes, but Mike can't sign your taxes because he doesn't have a PTIN. So what does he do? He asks you to sign them. So if something goes wrong, guess who's responsible? You, the individual. You can't go back and get Mike to argue for there you, you or go. anything like that. There you okay. go. Okay. So when you get ready to sit down with the client, what types of records or documentation do you ask them to bring? I want to know your history. I want to know, first of all, who did your taxes last year? Okay, I want you to bring me a copy of your last year's taxes. Do you have a W-2? Do you do 1099s? Are you self-employed? How many jobs do you have? How many kids do you have? Daycare. Um, do you get any Social Security? Do you 
give to your IRA, Roth or otherwise retirement plan. And I just go down a checklist, a mental checklist of what I think you may have. And what that does, that cuts down the time that you're with me, but it also gives me your background. Okay. Now, you mentioned that you are licensed in the state of Maryland. Yes. Um, is there any reciprocity for any other state that you can do business in? I can do business in D.C., Virginia. Neither one of them require you to have a license at the time. Okay. So most states do not require you to have a license. It's probably 11, and I don't know them on hand, but they're not D.C. or Virginia. So. Okay. I'm just asking because oh, maybe definitely. some of our viewers <laughs> want to send their taxes to you. Right. So um, if you can do them out of state or, or something like that, I just wanted to, to find out. So um, how are fees determined for your clients? I mean, I know that, you know, um, an individual that's just doing a 1040 easy is going to be different than somebody that's doing a 1040A where they're, you know, itemizing everything that they're doing. But how are fees determined for people's taxes? Exactly. Fees are determined by the forms you use. Like you said, a 1040EZ is allotted a certain amount of time to be done. Based on an hourly wage, say it's assigned $60 to do a 1040EZ because it's going to take you 30 minutes. A 1040A is assigned $120 because it's going to take you an hour to do. And each form is allotted a numerical value money-wise. Okay. So uh, 1040, my particular case, just off the top of my head, I believe 1040 is like 120. A Schedule A, which is your itemization, is 75. Uh, your child dependent form is $40. If you have miscellaneous, believe that's another $75. And then you get into your Schedule C's with your businesses, businesses and, and the, that's when you start, you start doing the rent coming out your <laughs> Exactly. That's when you start okay. coming out your pocket. Okay. Yeah. So, so. Um, I mean, it could be most of the time, you know, most families can get out of my office $220, $300. But okay. if you got businesses and stuff like that, it can push up where it's to $600. So, that, that's what I charge myself. So, okay. Know. Okay. So, when you're doing these taxes, do you file them electronically or are, do the people have to, you know, pick up the forms from you, mail them in, you know, the old fashioned way, make no. that run to the post office at midnight before, you right. know, once again, once again, the IRS is getting really strict. So one of the things the IRS has said is if you do more than 10 returns a year, you have to file them electronically. Okay. So you, I don't even have a choice. So before you leave my office, I have an email that says, your taxes have been received by the IRS. What does that mean? That means everything's checked out. Your name matches your social security number and everything. I've had clients come and we've done their taxes and I've got a reject code. And they're looking at me like, hey, what did you do? And I'm looking at them like I haven't done anything. What's happened a lot of times is maybe you and your baby daddy ain't together and somebody else has filed the kid or maybe something small. Maybe I missed key. Maybe I put in a three where your social security number is a four. But right then I will get a rejection code. They will email me immediately and they'll say name mismatch. I simply go in, change the name, send it back in. We're good. Okay. Now, on that electronic filing, that, so it's their electronic signature that's signing that return. It's not a uh, handwritten signature that's like scanned on the form. And no, it's not a handwritten signature. There's a form that we use mm -hmm. that you sign, and I assign you a PIN number. Okay. And we'll make that up together. Okay. Now, when your clients do that, you said that they leave your office knowing that they have their you know returns filed with the irs get a confirmation you know email right. back um when do they receive a copy of their return nine out of ten times because most of the people are referrals or i know you um i give you your taxes when you leave me okay okay uh, i will ask you do you want a hard copy or a soft copy if you tell me you want a hard copy i'll print you out a hard copy and give it to you in a folder with all your documents and everything you bought me Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a copy of all that in my system. Right. So I don't need any of that. So, but if you want me to, I'll give you what you bought me and I will email you your taxes. Now, you say that you have a copy of all of that. Do you have a copy of the stuff that they brought you as well? Yes. Okay. Because most of it I've keyed in. Like I'll key in your W-2 and it'll build a W-2 for you. Okay. If it's something that I think 
the IRS may ask me about, I can scan it in and put it into your documents. Okay. So, yes. All right. So, um, now, here's, here's the good one. If they have a problem after tax season is over, how do they go about finding you? Are you still available? You know, oh, yes. You're, yes. Not, you're not in the Caribbean, <laughs> you know, after April 15th, somewhere chilling. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm right here. I'm here, you know. Um, my friends joke me on Facebook. They're like, uh, you don't have a pseudo name? I'm like, I'm not hiding from anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm Ezell Wooden Jr. all day long. If I filed your taxes, last thing I tell you, if you should get a letter from the IRS, the first thing you do is call me. Okay. Okay. Because I did your taxes, I can contact them. I can straighten it out. I can help you straighten it out. An enrolled agent can help anybody, whether they've done your taxes or not. If it gets to the point where I cannot fix it, I will refer to you, refer you to somebody that I know that can. Okay. Okay. So you do have somebody available. Definitely. To, to go to that next level if necessary. Definitely. Okay. So what happens if somebody does get audited? If someone gets audited, contact the person that did your taxes. Tell them what you're being audited for. If you're getting audited, it, it may be a, um, I can't think of the name when they call it, a paper audit. Mm. Meaning you just have to send more paperwork to them. Okay. Say you, um, a friend of mine got a paper audit for his school. Because they said, well, you said what you were billed, but we don't see where you paid it. So mm -hmm. all he had to do is he had to go in and shoot a copy of his uh, checking account. And he blacked out everything that wasn't necessary. Right, including the account number. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he sent it to him. Okay. And they said, you know what? Cool, we're good. Okay. Uh, if they're going to come to your office or come to your home, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have my office upstairs. I have my wife's office right here. So, you know, if they want to come and check, yeah, do you really have a Dell laptop that you pay? Yeah, I do. Do you really have an embroidery machine? Yeah, I do. Okay. You know, so, do you really have two? Yeah, she has her one and I have one upstairs. So, okay. You just want to make sure you keep notes. If you're, if you're a home-based business guy, you want to keep notes. I start using a program called TaxBot. Great program. And you want something like that because we have a tendency to grab receipts and we stick them in our pocket, stick it in our wallet, and the paper that they made on. Right. It starts to fade. There you go. And that's why I think they made that machine, what is it, neat receipts that you can scan all your receipts neat in. Neat receipts is great. Have nothing against it. But neat receipts ain't with you when you're out. Okay? <laughs> right. Me and you go to Hooters. We're having a business meeting. When she hands me the receipt, I take my cell phone. I take a picture of it. I upload it to TaxBot right there. Done. Done.